Hi everyone and welcome back to my series of Lightroom tutorials. We've been working our way down the various panels um, and today we're going to be looking at the detail panel which encompasses sharpening and noise reduction. Both of these features are quite easy to use so what I'm going to do is just briefly explain what the sliders are and we'll look at what they actually do to our picture. I've got a couple of pictures we're going to work on. I'm going to zoom in here on this tower and at the moment I've got sharpening amount quite high um, and all this does is varies how much sharpening obviously we're going to apply for the picture with no sharpening you might be able to see that it's quite soft around here especially in the glass area and as I push that right up just for maximum effect you should see now a little bit more definition let's just bring it back a little bit possibly difficult to see on a video um, but we'll put the sharpening up you can definitely see it down this line for example if I come back so amount fairly straightforward um, it just controls how much sharpening we're applying the radius the way sharpening works is it boosts the contrast between or around the edges that it finds in the picture and the radius basically determines how far either side of the edge it detects it applies sharpening to so we try and keep this figure quite low if we push it up quite high you get some kind of ghosting effects turn the, turn that right up um, you might just see down the edge we're getting some halo effects and if we can see it in other areas maybe round here so if we take the radius back down you'll see that that's faded out now so it's a bit of a balancing game um, usually recommendation is to keep it around about one one and a half something like that but even there I can still see some slight banding but I'm going to leave it at one. So that's what the radius does. It's controlling the distance either side of the edge that's being affected by a sharpening. Incidentally, this radius value is in pixels. So clear that up. The detail slider. When I talk about the detail slider, I like people to imagine I like a bird feather. And if you were to sharpen a bird feather with a low level of detail, it might sharpen the edges of the feather for you. But as you turn the detail up, you would then start to see the veins within the feather and they too would get sharpened. Now this isn't gonna look pretty on this picture because um, we've got sharpening turned right up anyway and it's gonna get quite distorted, but it, it will allow you to see the effect of turning the detail up. If we look in this area here at the moment, as I take it up, you'll see that it starts bringing out more texture, although because of the amount of sharpening we've put on it, it's, it's looking pretty horrible, but uh, we would never actually push it up that high for detail, but it shows you the effect of what it does. Instead of just looking now around the edges of the object in its entirety, it starts concentrating on some of the actual smaller facets within the picture. So this, this architrave work here. So that's what detail's doing. Um, probably not the best picture to demonstrate it on, if I'm honest, but it keeps it all in one place and you can see what it's doing. The last slider under the sharpening is the masking option. And you can see at the moment, I've got that turned right up to 100. And what the masking allows us to do is to select which areas of the picture we actually want to apply sharpening to. Now, the reason I've turned it up to 100 on this picture is because when you increase sharpening, one of the unfortunate side effects is we usually increase noise in our picture. And if I actually take my masking down, you'll see what I mean by that. Look at all this noise in the sky. <laughs> Atrocious. You don't see it when you're right out here, but when you come in, this is actually digital noise um, on the picture. Um, so we might want to apply sharpening to the building, but we don't necessarily want to apply it to all our background sky or any other softer textures that you might have in your picture. So we can use the mask to basically clear out areas that we don't want to include in the sharpening. If I hold down my Alt or Option key, you'll see swaps to reset sharpening which we can click on but if I can now turn the masking up and at the moment I'm clicking with my mouse and you'll see everything's gone white because basically what it's saying is it's applying sharpening to the whole picture as I move the mask across you'll see black areas start appearing and those black areas is where it will not be applying the sharpening so I can actually take it up to around about 46 percent there and if I let go of my mouse you can see now that we don't have that kind of same level of noise within the picture. Still horribly sharpened, I hasten to add, but uh, I say for the purposes of this video, it allows you to see it. 
we can turn that up. And I quite often find that I turn the masking up. You don't really need to see the mask by holding down the Alt Option key, um, but it is quite handy sometimes. Um, but that is what the masking option does. Let's just finish by pulling those back to something a little bit more sensible. So maybe sharpening. We'll turn up to around about 40, 50. I don't need to change the radius detail. Uh, not doing an awful lot that we can see. Just turn it up a little bit. That's not too bad. I can actually put it up a lot higher now. You'll notice now I've actually turned the amount of sharpening down and um, I can probably pull the mask back a little bit. But that's uh, that's effectively how we use the sharpening panel. It's one of those things you probably just need to zoom in on the picture, look at the details, play around with sliders and see what's working for you. To look at noise reduction, let's jump over to a different picture. Come back to my grid and let's try this one here, I believe. Let's just pop into the develop module and zoom in a little bit. Now we talked about noise just a minute ago when we were talking about sharpening and typically noise is a feature of high ISOs and as you can see up here I was shooting this picture at 3200 ISO uh, from the back of the theatre on my little Fuji crop sensor camera. So we've picked up a little bit of noise and there are two types of noise and the first one which is most predominant in this picture is luminance noise which are those white speckled areas like we saw in the previous picture for that matter um, but you can see them all over this picture and we can control luminance noise using the luminance slider. And if I just grab that slider and I pull it up, you should see that it's getting rid of that noise that we saw. I've pushed it right up now quite a lot. But if I pull it right back again, you can see here's all the noise. And as we take it up, we slowly take it out of the picture. Now you may have noticed as we increased our luminance noise reduction, the picture got a lot softer. If I bring it back, if we look at the edges perhaps around here and then take that luminance up a bit, it softens the picture off and unfortunately this is one of the trade-offs with trying to reduce noise in the picture. We can compensate off that slightly by increasing the noise, luminance noise reduction. Um, we lose a little bit of detail and we lose some of the contrast in the picture and that's part of the way that the noise is suppressed. But we can regain some of that detail by using the detail slider if you look perhaps around the hair here, if I push that detail right up, you might just see we get a little bit more definition around here. And I don't think you see the contrast quite so much in this picture. We can push the contrast up. At the end of the day, it's a balance between how much noise suppression you put in using the luminance slider, and then how much detail and contrast you pull back. Because by increasing either of these two functions, detail and contrast, you're essentially putting a bit more noise back into your picture. So it's really very much of a balancing act. The other type of noise is color noise. And we're gonna jump to another photo for this one. Um, I found it very difficult to find a photo that works to show the effects of color noise. Excuse me. So I'm actually gonna play around with this one. And to do it, um, I'm actually gonna increase the exposure of it so that we can see some of the noise in the background here. Because it's very difficult to actually show color, the color noise reduction uh, in a lot of pictures I've found. Um, what it does is instead of now looking at those highlights and speckles, it's looking for like contamination of colors um, and you get a mushiness. We see it a lot in the reds, um, the end of the color spectrum and that. And what I'm best do is just show you, if I push the color noise up, you can hardly see any change really. Let's pull it back down. Um, you might just notice a little bit in the reds here. It's quite speckly. As I take it up, it kind of reduces that speckled nature. It's not the same as luminance noise where we're removing whites, although you can see that it does have an effect still luminance noise. Um, but if I pull that back, take my luminance noise up still, you can see it's not making much difference to those black specks, but if I take the color noise up, you'll see that it slowly fades those out. It's very difficult to show. Um, the detail slider works in the same way as the detail slider did for luminance noise reduction. Obviously, we're softening the picture to a certain extent by increasing our color noise reduction. 
and the detail is aimed at trying to pull some of that back and again very difficult to see I'm afraid um, trying to find some areas as I push it up you may notice this is getting a little sharper and again it works in the same way the detail and the amount of color noise is very much a trade-off the smoothness one is again quite difficult to see but it, what it will do if I can try and find a, an example is it it tends to smooth out the overall color let's see what that looks like there as I increase it you might notice just in here there's a slightly darker patch running down the middle and as I take that up it softens that out ever so slightly but very difficult to see I'm afraid especially in a video I don't tend to use color noise reduction that much if I'm honest so that's a brief introduction to the detail panel um, I hope you found it of use and uh, if you like what I do then obviously I'd love you to click on the old subscribe button and hopefully I will see you in another tutorial soon thanks a lot